to have had my boss bullied me because she was extremely envious of me. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I sent me an Instagram. After she told me not to come into work for an entire week because she was hiring a new girl, I decided to go in the following day and just make sure that I still had my job. I walked in and said hi to everyone. This is when, once again, I catch her talking trash about me with the new girl. She told the new girl that I thought I was better than everyone and that she should definitely stay away from me. But again, I didn't say anything just because I didn't want to have any confrontations with my boss. I waited a few seconds, knocked on the door, and entered. I asked her if I could speak to her and she said yes. I told her I couldn't stay off working for a full week. This is when she said, okay, fine, you can come in tomorrow. But you're going to have to train the new girl because she has zero experience. So essentially, I wasn't going to be doing anyone's nails. I was going to be training the new girl. This made me upset, but I knew that I needed to play my cards right. So I said yes with a smile on my face. I trained the new girl for the entire week, and she actually turned out to be pretty good at nails. The following week, she was even taking on clients for gel manicures. Now, I thought this was going to make my boss upset, but it actually made her really happy. Finally, I see that everyone's starting to pack up their stuff to leave early. I asked one of the girls what was happening and she said that everyone was going to dinner together. I said, oh, okay. And she said, weren't you told? Uh, no, I was not told. I knew this was another intimidation slash bullying tactic from my boss. My boss had even invited the new girl and not me. They all left, went to dinner, and my boss pretended not to even see me when she was leaving. The following day, I come into work and one of my clients is already waiting for me. We sit down at the table and my client begins to tell me that my boss was talking trash about me before I came in and that she even did it in front of the clients. She informed me that my boss was talking trash about my body, my hair and my clothes and that I was basically a JLo knockoff. I quit on the spot and took all my clients with me, over 22 women. I opened my own salon two months later. I'm now her competition. She sent me a message apologizing, but I haven't responded. What should I say? Story time about how my boss severely bullied me because she was envious of me. This clearance is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. I work at a really high-end nail salon. I'm talking about two to three hundred dollars per manicure and pedicure. So it's very high-end and our clientele is very rich. My goal has been to open my own nail salon, but it hasn't happened yet. Obviously, I don't have enough money to open it, so I needed to get a job. This new nail salon had opened up near my house. It was the prettiest thing I'd ever seen in my life, so I definitely wanted to get a job there. I went in for an interview with the owner of the nail salon. During the interview, she was really nice, but kind of gave off that Queen Bee vibe. Like, she was the popular girl and she didn't want anyone else to be popular or pretty. I got a call from her a week later and she asked me if I could do her nails to see how well I did. And when I did her nails, she was impressed. She said that I was really good and that I was hired immediately. I started working and within the first month, I had the biggest clientele list. A lot of clients were asking for me to do their nails. And when other clients heard the other clients asked for me, they also started asking for me. You know, word of mouth. I was extremely proud of myself. Not only was I making a lot of money, but I was actually building a clientele base that really loved my work. Don't get me wrong, the other girls at the salon were actually really good, and so was the owner. If we were really busy, sometimes the owner would pick up any walk-in clients. And one of the walk-in clients came in and asked specifically for me. The owner told her that I was busy and that she would do her nails. That's when the girl said that she would come back whenever I was available. My boss quickly snapped at the girl and told her that she was just as good as I was. The worst part was that she said it loud enough so that everyone in the salon could hear her. The client clearly felt uncomfortable but agreed to it anyway. Later that day on my break, I could hear my boss talking in the kitchen. I decided to wait outside and see what she was saying. Sure enough, she was talking about me and telling one of the other girls that I thought I was too pretty for this job and that I didn't have any experience. She also said that I probably just watched YouTube videos in order to learn. Number one, I have 10 years of experience and number two it doesn't matter if you watch youtube videos as long as you're learning this obviously hurt my feelings and i tried not to cry then i realized that she did it on purpose she was speaking really loudly and she knew that i was about to go on break that's when i realized that she was definitely trying to bully me the following day i get a phone call from her telling me that i should stay home when i asked her why she said that she hired a new girl and she said in fact don't come at all this week and she basically hung up on me part two is up my 22 female boyfriend 25 male is hiding all of my stuff and I have no idea why. My boyfriend of five months just moved in with me three weeks ago. He had some problems with his apartment, damp walls, and it has to be renovated. As my roommate is currently spending some time abroad, I told him it would be okay if he stayed at my place for four to six weeks. He'll be able to move back to his own apartment by that time. So now we've been living together for three weeks and things started out great. Jealousy had been a bit of a problem between us because we often go out separately, probably once a week, but coming home to the same apartment helped him get over that. Interesting. But there has been one new problem. Now, this may seem petty at first, but I'm really at my wit's end with this one. Ever since he moved in with me, things started disappearing and then reappearing one day later in the same place they were missing from. I'm talking about documents, small household items, and food. And it's not like losing keys and then finding them again somewhere. I specifically look for something in a certain place where it isn't, but it's there the next day. For example, I like to take a chocolate bar with me to work in the morning, and for that, I normally have a pack of chocolate bars at home. Shortly after he moved in with me, I woke up to find all the chocolate was gone. I asked him about it. He said he didn't know anything about it. I came home just to find the chocolate bars are in the cupboard again. I ask him. He says he doesn't know anything about it. Quote, maybe you just didn't see them in the morning. We're talking about a large pack with about 12 chocolate bars. How can I not see that? At first, I thought it was maybe some kind of strange humor, but he seems angry when I bring it up. 
and it's starting to really piss me off because sometimes it's been items belonging to one of my friends that I wanted to give back to them and then couldn't, or it was certain documents I needed for a certain day. Now I have absolutely no idea what this is about. I am not crazy. I just don't understand at all. He gets really angry when I talk about it, saying I'm making this up just to quote, cause drama. Why should I? I have no idea what's going on. Any ideas? It's like the weirdest shit I've ever heard. Story time about why you should never, ever, ever do drugs. So a little background information. In my town on the 15th of June this year, two girls got kidnapped in my hometown. So I kind of knew these two girls. I mean, they went to my school, but that was really it. Because low-key, I didn't want to be friends with them, and I kind of hated them. They were in 7th grade, I was in 8th grade, so they were probably like a year younger than me. Anyway, so it was a Wednesday, and the last time they had been seen was at 8pm with a 30-year-old man. They were supposedly doing drugs outside of a McDonald's. Well, I guess this man saw that they had been doing drugs and he wanted some. Before that, I guess he kind of eased into the question because he was like talking to them, getting to know them, and I guess he thought he had a really good shot at getting some drugs. But when he asked, they said no. So then he asked a few more times and they finally gave them to him, but whenever they got closer, he grabbed both of them, put him in his van, and drove off. And he hid them in his house. Like for part two. Part two of why you should never, ever, ever do drugs. So like I said, he asked for them again, and finally the girls decided to give him some. But when they got closer, he grabbed both of them and shoved them in his van, drove off. Well, he ended up driving to his house and decided to hide them there. Well, one of the girls' aunts posted something on Facebook saying that both of them were missing. And soon, the news made an article that literally said, Drug addict and her friend gets kidnapped. Um... They went missing for like six days, and on the 22nd of June, they were found, but now they won't stop bragging about how fun it was to get kidnapped. And that is why, still to this day, I absolutely despise these girls. My niece Jenny went through trauma as a kid and ended up becoming an emotional eater, obese, held back a grade, and socially stunned. Her parents, with a lot of pushing, put her into therapy, and she was able to heal from the trauma and gain control of her eating. Because they waited so long to take the problem seriously, after she lost the weight, her skin didn't bounce back, and she was left with a saggy belly. She had a double roll belly where there's a roll above and below the navel and the bottom one tends to stick out in clothing. Nothing she did would fix it. Her parents are very much anti-plastic surgery and given that she was a teenager, I totally get it, but she was miserable in her body. Jenny stays with me during the summers because I live near a beach and I love spending time with her. Over the years, she would cry and cry to me about how much she hated her stomach and how she just wishes she could look normal and her parents would not let her get a tummy tuck. Last year, I decided that I would give her the tummy tuck for her 18th birthday as long as she cleared it with her counselor. The counselor agreed that this was something that would truly help. She had done it late in the summer, healed while staying with me, and then went to college. I can't begin to tell you the kind of different person she became. Confident, happy, she finally wore clothes that didn't hide her body in the whole nine yards. She came home from spring break and finally wore something that made her mom take notice, and I'm guessing mom saw the scar. She hit the roof and started yelling at Jenny for what she did, asking her if she really spent her college money for something this frivolous. Jenny came crying to me about it, and I knew I couldn't let her mom blame her, so I fessed up. I am now completely blacklisted. My sister basically thinks I'm Satan, warping her kid's self-esteem and self-image. I should have told her to learn to love her body instead of giving into diet culture. Jenny is healthier and happier than she's ever been before. Furthermore, she was 18, and this is something she has wanted since she was about 15. It didn't lead her to wanting more surgeries. It led her to sobbing happy tears after she tried on a curve-fitting dress for the first time. I don't see what I did was wrong at all. At the same time, I know she's not my kid, and we went behind my sister's back. Plastic surgery is a big deal, so I don't know. When I was 24, me and my sister moved into an apartment together. At the time, I was going to college to get my master's, and she was going in to get her degree. The rent was $500 a month. I know cheap. We only paid $250 each. But the neighborhood was bad. There was a lot of crackhead, gangs. There was a shooting just about every week. I know, just crazy. Anyways, one day in the middle of the night, we get a hard banging on our door, and it's a lady calling out for help. When I opened it, she had a black eye, she was bruised up, and her forehead was bleeding. I asked what's going on, and she replied her boyfriend is trying to kick her and her kids out of their place. She explained she has a one-year-old and a five-year-old, and her boyfriend is throwing all other things out. So I walked over back to her apartment, which was two floors down. When we finally reached the apartment, the whole apartment was on fire. She screamed and said her babies were in there. Come back for part two. This is part two of how my neighbor's boyfriend set her apartment on fire with her children inside. If you didn't watch part one, go watch that so you can understand this part. So, like I said, the apartment was on fire and she was screaming about her kids. And she tried to run in and get her kids, but I stopped her because there was no way she and her kids were going to make it out alive. A few seconds later, her boyfriend walks up and says, let her go. 
and she runs over to him and swings on him a couple times and says, what did you do? Get them out. And he replied, I told you to leave, right? She falls to her knees and at that point she just stops crying. So I run upstairs calling for help, telling everyone to get out and call the fire department. The fire starts to quickly spread and everyone is coming out of their apartments. When I went back to the area where the lady was, her boyfriend disappeared and I picked her up from off the ground. I brung her into the parking lot where everyone else was. After 20 minutes, the fire department finally shows up. Come back for part three. This is part three of how my neighbor's boyfriend set her apartment on fire with her children inside. So, like I said, the fire department finally shows up after 20 minutes. I told them there were kids inside and they went up to find them. They put the fire out right after a firefighter came up to me and said there was no one in there and i told him no there were two kids a couple minutes later a few detectives and cops came up to me and asked me a few questions about the scene asking things like if i know who started it and about my neighbors a couple minutes later there was an old man which i found out was one of my neighbors he came from the side of the apartment complex screaming that there was a little boy on his back lying on the ground saying that he couldn't move so quickly the detective go over to where my neighbor said the boy was. I'm running out of time. Part four will be up soon. This is part four of how my neighbor's boyfriend set her apartment on fire with her children inside. After one of my neighbors claimed they saw a little boy on the ground in the back of the apartment complex. And the boy's arm was pillows wrapped up in a comforter. When the detective got the paramedics to pick the boy up, they took the comforter he had and they opened it and inside was a baby. After the whole situation was over, they took me in for questioning. Also, by the way, they admitted the lady into the hospital as well because she was bruised up really bad. And anytime anyone asked her anything, she was mute. During my time in the police station, they told me about the little boy. Come to find out that little boy on the ground in back of the apartment complex was her son. They said he wrapped his baby sister up to protect her from getting hurt. Baby girl was fine. The pillows he wrapped her in softened her fall. But for the little boy, he was paralyzed. From What's the most messed up thing someone has ever told you after barely knowing them? Well, I'm gonna go first. So in high school, I would take public transportation back home. Well, this one lady got on a bus with her daughter and sat next to me. I looked over and told her that her daughter looked very pretty. Then out of nowhere, she just starts crying. I asked, ma'am, are you all right? And she says, it's my husband. I didn't want to be invasive, but I asked, did something happen? Then she goes on a 10 minute rant about how abusive her husband was and that she tried to stay for the baby. She was scared, but she finally had the courage to go. I felt bad and asked her, is there anything I could do to help? And she proceeds to tell me that everything is fine. I'm like, are you sure? She replies, yes, everything is fine. He had a peanut allergy and he died last week. And I'm like, shook. And I said, I'm so sorry for your loss. And she responds, no, no. It's better that he's gone anyway. And I'm like, huh? Right after, she prepares to get off the bus and she grabs her daughter. I said, bye. Right before she gets off, she said she put peanuts in his food. When I was six years old, my family moved to Virginia because my dad had a new job opportunity. We moved to this really old house that every step that you took, you'd hear the floorboards cracking. During the summer, I met this girl named Lucy. She knocked on my door one day and asked if I wanted to play. So for weeks, me and Lucy grew closer. We'd play hopscotch, jump rope, hand games, and hide and seek. One day, we were getting ready to play hopscotch and my mom came outside telling me to come in and eat dinner. I asked my mom if Lucy could come too. My mom had asked, who's Lucy? I looked back at Lucy and I said, she's right here. My mom replied, right where? When I turned back around, Lucy disappears. I called out for Lucy, but my mom yells out, there isn't anyone out there. Get your butt in the house. It's time to come eat. It gets a little bit paranormal after this incident, but come back for part two if you want to know why Lucy disappeared. This is part two of why my friend Lucy disappeared. A week later after the incident happened, I saw Lucy playing outside with a little baby boy. He had to be around two years old. I quickly ran outside and said, hey, where'd you go the other day? Lucy replied, I wasn't feeling good, so I went home. I asked her, is that your baby? And Lucy laughed and said, no, this is my baby brother. I take care of him. And I asked again, don't your parents do that? Lucy said, no, they couldn't save us. I said, save? And Lucy gets a little frustrated and said, they just abandoned us, but we don't need them anymore. We take care of ourselves. Lucy then says, we got to get home. We'll see you another time. She took her brother's hand and turned the corner. I watched them go, but 
When I looked down the corner, they turned. They both disappeared. I'm running out of time. Sorry, guys. Come back for a part three. Story time about the old man that died in our basement. At the time, my mom was a CNA and she would do at-home care. One of the people that she took care of was one of her best friend's uncles. She would drop him off Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. He was in the 70s, he had arthritis, and was bedridden. So my mom would feed him, clean him, and change his diapers. But he was so mean. He didn't like me or my brothers and sisters. Just a little old grumpy man. But my mom would keep all her patients in the basement. By the way, which didn't look like a basement, it looked really nice, almost like a hospital type. So one day my mom needed to leave the house to go get food for the man, and she told me to watch out for her and call her if anything ever happened. So I went down there and he just stared at me the whole time. I said hello and he rolled his eyes. Couple hours passed, I'm scrolling on my phone, and his heart starts beating really fast. He looked like he was trying to cough and was reaching out for me. Everything happened so fast, I was in shock and I didn't know what to do, and he grabbed my arm. The students at the school for nursing got along quite well, except for Alice. The problem with Alice was that she was just too perfect. Well, at least that's what it seemed like to the other students. She was always friendly, always cheerful. Her assignments were always on time and just perfect. Many of the students resented Alice. They would have liked to see her fail or cry or get scared sometimes, just to show she had weaknesses just like them. One night, many of the students tried to frighten Alice as a practical joke. They borrowed the hand of a corpse they had been studying in anatomy and tied it to the light cord in her closet. And when she tried to turn her light on, she would find herself holding a dead man's hand. That would scare anyone, one of them said. Afterwards, they went to the movie theaters. When they got back, Alice was asleep. But when they didn't see her the next morning, they decided to find out what happened. They looked everywhere for Alice and when they found her, they found her in the closet on her floor. She was sitting there staring at the hand and mumbling. Well, um, the joke worked but nobody was laughing. Once there was a girl named Jenny. She was like all the other girls except for one thing. She always wore a green ribbon around her neck. There was a boy named Alfred in her class. Alfred liked Jenny and Jenny liked Alfred. One day he asked her, why do you wear that ribbon all the time? I cannot tell you, said Jenny. But Alfred kept asking, why do you wear it? And Jenny would say, it's not important. Jenny and Alfred grew up and fell in love. One day they got married. After their wedding, Alfred said, now that we're married, you must tell me why you have that green ribbon. You must wait, said Jenny. I will tell you when the right time comes. Years passed. Alfred and Jenny grew old. One day, Jenny became very sick. The doctor told her that she was dying. Jenny called Alfred to her side and said, now I can tell you about the green ribbon. She told him to untie it so he could see why. And Jenny's head fell off. This story time is from a follower and he really needs advice. By the way, we're calling him Jason and he's 17. So Jason has been with his girlfriend for about a year and a half. The whole relationship was great and they never had any serious problems until recently. Jason came out as bi and told Kayla and he still wanted to be with her but Kayla broke things off with him. She told him that she didn't want to be with a bisexual man. So after breaking all ties with him, she distanced herself and after two months of being apart, Kayla says she started to feel really weird and she was sick. Come to find out she was pregnant. But Kayla doesn't want the baby and wants to get an abortion because she doesn't want nothing to do with Jason. But Jason, on the other hand, really wants the baby. He said he knows he's young, but he's prepared. Jason feels really conflicted. He loves Kayla and wants her to do what's best for her. But he said he'll take care of the baby himself and be a single dad if he could. But guys, please give him some advice down below in the comments. Story time on how I got robbed by my sister's boyfriend. So when school started, my sister entered 11th grade and I entered 7th. She was excited because my parents said that she was allowed to date when she got to her junior year. And immediately she got with this dude named Tony. My parents didn't know much about him, but I knew him because he'd be in a neighborhood with his gang while me and my friends were playing outside. He used to hotwire cars. He was in and out of juvie. And one time I heard he jumped a kid named Alexander because he had the newest Jordans. I was so confused on why my sister wanted him, but I ignored it. One to two months go by and Halloween comes up. So me and my friends get dressed up to get candy. I was a ghost. I know cliche, but when you're in the hood, you gotta do what you gotta do. When we got done trick or treating, it was time to go home. Then out of nowhere, a group of guys ran up on us and was trying to take our candy. So I pushed one of the guys away from us and someone pulls a strap out on me. And it's Tony. Part two is coming soon.
I too of how I got robbed by my sister's boyfriend. Like I said, a group of guys were after us and tried to take our Halloween candy. When I pushed one of the guys away, someone pulls a strap out on me and it's Tony. I was so scared at that moment, I literally peed my pants. I really thought that that was my last day. Then he snatches a blanket off of me and was like, oh, so you must think you tough. And I said, no. And he says, tell your boys to share. That's all we want. When we gave them our candy, they ran off with it. And me and my friends were so upset because it took us four hours to collect all of that candy. When I finally get back home, my sister sees me and asks, where's your candy and why is your pants wet? So I tried to explain to her what happened. Then out of nowhere, Tony pops up and walks into our living room. I look at him in shock because this man literally held a G-U-N to my head and now he's in my my house he walks up to me and says here you can have my candy and it's literally the same candy he stole from me earlier and I just stared at him my sister's like take the candy stop acting like a weirdo when I take the candy she hugs and kisses him and says that's so sweet of you when I was younger there was a girl I knew who lived in our neighborhood none of the kids liked her because they claimed that she stinked and acted weird when they talked about her I kind of felt bad so I became friends with her yeah of course I got the why do you hang out with her but she really wasn't all that bad but her scent they were kind of right about that one day she invites me over to her house and she was very excited because she told me I was the first person to ever come over and I felt so honored so I went but when I went into her house it smelled very bad almost nauseating but I didn't say anything because I didn't want to be rude she had a lot of uncles that lived with her family honestly it was like four to five families in one house to be honest but she first introduced me to her stepmom I said hi to her but she just stared at me in disgust then we went to her room to play as it got later, I told her I needed to go home. But she begged me to stay longer because she was scared. I told her I'd come tomorrow and she just starts crying. She runs into her bed and falls into her sheets, which lifted her skirt. There were bruises all over her thighs. Let me know if y'all want a part two. Part two about the girl I know who lived in my neighborhood. So it's late and it's time for me to go home. She said she was scared and starts crying. Then she runs into her bed and flops into her sheets. Her skirt lifted and there were bruises all around her thighs. I ask her, what happened? She looks down and quickly pulls her skirt over her bruises. I ask, did someone do that to you? And she says she can't tell me. I ask why. She responds, if I do, they're going to hurt me. So I ran downstairs to her stepmom and told her what I saw. She sits and laughs in my face. I was so confused and asked her, are you gonna help her? And she tells me that little hoe can help herself and that I actually should be going home. So I went into the living room where her uncles were and told them. One of them has said, that's why that girl don't need to be bringing random folks into the house and runs upstairs to her room. One of the other uncles asks, you want to get popped? I shook my head in fear and said no. And he yells at me telling me to go home. From there, I ran home and never came back. And after that day, she never came back outside. It's been seven years. To this day, I wonder what happened to her. This story tells how my jealous stepsister cut all of my hair off when I was asleep. By the way, we're calling her Jamie. So growing up, me and Jamie never got along. She always talked bad about my mom and how my mom broke her family apart. She always had a problem with me, but I'd ignore her. Jamie was very insecure too. She always compared how he looked and would always say I was spoiled. And she only said that because last Christmas, I received way more presents than her. But that was because my dad got me those presents. One day, we got in an argument over cheese curls. She was upset because I took the last of it and she pushed me and knocked all the cheese curls on the floor. My mom came in the kitchen asking what happened. I told her what Jamie did. So my mom gripped her up by the neck and told her to go into her room and think about what she has done to me. Jamie stayed in her room all day. She never came back out to apologize night come and i went into my room to go to sleep as i was sleeping i felt something touching my head when i got up i saw all my hair on my pillow and jamie with scissors if y'all want to know what i did after that let me know down below in the comments this is part two of how my jealous stepsister cut all of my hair off when i was asleep so after i woke up out of my sleep i saw all my hair on my pillow and jamie with scissors i've never screamed so loud in my life i tried to get back at jamie but she had scissors in her hand and threatened to cut me if i didn't back up it was like she wanted to physically harm me so i took the little karaoke machine and threw it at her but it fell on her leg and she started crying i was confused because the karaoke machine wasn't even that heavy jamie's dad walked into the room asking what happened and jamie said that i threw the karaoke machine at her and my stepdad yelled at me asking, why would you do that? And then asked me what happened to my hair. I pointed at Jamie and said, Jamie cut all of my hair off. My stepdad looked at me like I was crazy and picked up Jamie and took her to the bathroom. I was mad because I knew Jamie was faking it. Then I went to my parents' room and told my mom that Jamie cut all of my hair off. If y'all want to know what happened after that, let me know down below in the comments. This is part three of how my jealous stepsister cut all of my hair off when I was asleep. So after I threw the karaoke machine at Jamie, she pretended to be hurt and my stepdad picked her up and took her to the bathroom. I quickly ran into my parents' room and I told my mom that Jamie cut all of my hair off. My mom got upset and asked my stepfather, did he not see my hair? He said, well, I threw the karaoke machine at Jamie. 
I yelled and told him that Jamie cut all of my hair off, which is the reason why I threw the karaoke machine at her. And she's faking it. My stepdad turned to Jamie and asked her, did she really do that? Jamie lied at first and said no. When me and my mom walked into the bathroom, she said yes, and that she only did it because my mom beat her. My mom was so confused. My stepdad said, you beat my child? After this, it get real messy, and I don't know if you guys want me to get into it, but let me know down below in the comments if you guys want to know what happened after that. This is part four for my jealous stepsister cut all of my hair off when I was asleep. I wasn't really expecting to make a part four because it gets messy after this, but since y'all asked for it, here I go. So after Jamie cut all of my hair off and lied and told her dad that the reason why she cut my hair off because my mom beat her, her dad got really upset and actually thought my mom hit her. So our parents got into a whole argument and my mom was upset because he wasn't believing her. And my mom knew it was her word against his daughter and that there was no convincing. So my mom decided to leave. After 30 minutes of me and my mom packing up her things, Jamie went to her dad crying, saying that she lied and that my mom didn't beat her and that she apologized for cutting my hair. Her dad was really upset and made her apologize to me and my mom. Her dad, her dad apologized for not believing my mom, but it took my mom some time to come around. But at the end, everyone made peace and we were all good. Crazy thing is, after the whole situation was over, I was still bald. This story time is why I stopped being friends with the girl because her dad was a pervert and we're calling her Kim. So me and Kim became friends at school. Over time, we realized we lived close together. So she started coming over to my house and I started going over to hers. She had five brothers and she was the only girl. Whenever I'd come over to her house, I'd say hello to everyone, but her dad was always excited to see me. He'd immediately run and give me a hug. Over the past couple months, he'd give me a hug and a kiss on the cheek. He said that I was his new little girl. I felt uncomfortable with it, but... I went and told my friend Kim, and she said, he's just glad you're here, and you're like family now. I was like, okay, I guess, and I would just ignore it. Thanksgiving come up, and I went over to her house for a plate. Her dad opened up the door and gave me a hug and a kiss, as usual. I walked in the house, and he said, you need to eat to keep that booty plump. I laughed in nervousness, and he slapped and squeezed my butt. There's more that happened after this. Let me know if you guys want a part two. This is part two of why I stopped being friends with the girl because her dad was a pervert. So remember how I told y'all I came over for Thanksgiving? Her dad slapped and squeezed my butt. I was weirded out, but I laughed to hide how nervous and anxious I was. After I get a plate of food and I sit down with Kim, I told her her dad slapped my butt. And she was like, yeah, okay, as if she didn't believe me. So again, I ignored the situation. As the day goes on, everyone is playing board games, laughing, and eating desserts. I had cheesecake, and I'm lactose intolerant, and you know how that went. I left the family for a few minutes, and I go to the bathroom. When I was all finished, I opened up the door, and there was Kim's dad just sitting there smiling at me. I was like, oops, my bad. You were probably waiting for a while. Here you go. And I tried to move out of the way. But then he says, I don't need to go to the bathroom. He pushes me back in by the hips and locks the door. It gets really bad after this. Y'all let me know if I should make a part three. This is part three of why I stopped being friends with the girl because her dad was a pervert. So after her dad pushes me back into the bathroom and locks the door, he's sitting there smiling at me and I asked him very nervously if I did something wrong. He was like, yes, you haven't been spending time with daddy and he likes jiggle my breasts in a weird way. At this point, I was backing up because he starts acting weird. Then he starts unzipping his pants and gets closer to me. And guys, their bathroom wasn't that big. I immediately took the Windex that was on top of their toilet and sprayed it into his eyes and quickly ran out of the bathroom. After this, her dad starts yelling. While I'm coming downstairs, everyone asks what's going on. I told the whole family what Kim dad has done, and one of their little brothers yells at me, calling me a whore. I then went to Kim saying, you gotta believe me, that's what happened. She's like, my dad would never do anything like that. Her mom walks up to me and tells me that I should leave. 
I started crying and then her mom yelled at me and tells me to go home. So I left and went home crying. After that, I never went back over to her house. This story time is about how my boyfriend exposed my nudes to everyone at school. By the way, we're calling him Keith. So I've built my boyfriend Keith for four months. He seemed pretty cool and chill and very outgoing. He played basketball and was very popular in school. So when he started talking to me, I felt very special. But as time went by, he wasn't the guy who I thought he was. He was pretty self-entitled, cocky, and it got annoying. He expected everything to be handed to him. Anyway, throughout the relationship, he'd always ask for nudes. But I always tell him no because I'm not that type of girl to send any guy nudes. He'd always get mad at me and say couples are supposed to do that type of stuff, but I didn't give in. I'd always take pictures of myself because I liked my body, but I would never send them to anyone. One day, Keith comes over to my house. We chill for a little bit, and then my mom had called me. And then when I had came back, I saw him on my phone. When I snatched my phone from him, he sent the pictures that I took of myself and sent them to his phone. It get really reckless after this. This is part two of how my boyfriend exposed my news to everyone in school. So after Keith snuck into my phone and sent my news to himself, I got mad at him and told him to delete them. He tries to justify why he should keep them, but I say no because they were private. So then he shows me he's deleting them. After that, I kicked them out of my house for invading my privacy. Next day, I get ready for school. I text my boyfriend good morning as usual, but he didn't respond, which I thought was weird. When I get to school, everyone is staring at me. One of the basketball players at my school came up to me and said, you're wild. I was like, what? When I get to class, one of the girls sitting in front of the class said, girl, you're bold, and I'm still confused. When I sat down at my seat and I opened up my phone, I went through Snapchat, watching everyone's stories, and I saw my nudes on one of Keith's friend's story. After this, it gets terrible. This is part three of how my boyfriend exposed my news to everyone at school. So after I saw that Keith sent my news to one of his friends, his friends exposed my news on Snapchat. I got upset when lunchtime hit. I came into the lunchroom and everyone was staring at me. One of my best friends came up to me and asked me if I posted my nudes online. And I told her no and explained what Keith probably did. That lunchtime hit and we went around searching for him, but he wasn't there. I didn't know what to do, but my friends tried to convince me to go to the counselor, but I was embarrassed and I didn't want anyone to know about them or for them to tell my parents. I tried texting him Keith on why did he do that? Why did he send those people my pictures? But he just blocked me. I wasn't even sad about it no more. I just got upset. So I called my older brother about it and I told him what Keith did. And he said he'd be at my school at the end of the day and that he'll handle the whole situation. So school ends and everyone is leaving out. Me and my best friend walk out together to meet up with my brother. When I get outside, all I see is my brother and his friends jumping Keith. It gets crazy after this. Let me know if you guys want to part four. This is part four of how my boyfriend exposed my nudes to everyone in school. Like I said earlier, I was supposed to be meeting up with my brother after school, but I saw him and his friends jumping my boyfriend Keith. Everyone was crowded around him, and you can tell that Keith was getting it bad. His lip was busted, two black eyes, hands were bleeding, and his clothes were ripped up, and he had bruises on his legs and arms. And all his friends backed up, and the one who posted the nudes wasn't there. By the time I reached down to the crowd, the cops came, and I'm pretty sure it was probably because the school called. And I was trying to stop my brother and pull him off of Keith, but him and his friends just kept going at him. When the cops came storming in, they all hopped out of their cars. They screamed at everyone, telling everyone to back up. By the time they reached the center, they arrested my brother and his friends, and they had to get an ambulance for Keith. My brother tried to escape, but they tased him, and he fell to the ground. At this point, it gets really sad. To be honest, I don't even think y'all actually want to know what happened after that, but let me know down below. This is part five of how my boyfriend exposed my news to everyone in school. So after the fight broke up, the cops were called and they arrested my brother and his friends, but Keith had to get an ambulance. Afterwards, I went home and my friends came with me. At this point, I had to tell my parents. They were really disappointed, but they weren't hard on me. They ended up going to my school, talked to my counselors and all the teachers about it, which was very embarrassing for me. They bought in one of the students who was Keith's friend that actually posted the pictures. Some other stuff went down, but we were able to press charges, ask my brother, my parents bailed him out. But Keith tried pressing charges against my brother, but since I was already pressing charges against him for exposing my pictures, he ended up having to drop the charges because it was too much going on. Some other stuff went down in between, but it's too much to explain. But at the end of it all, I won the case. Keith and his friends ended up having to leave the school, and of course, I broke up with Keith, but my news will forever circle around the internet. Mm -hmm.